All right, so I went to the hygiene thing, which I know is a very touchy subject as many of you guys are smelly. My point in that video, before I conclude and jump into this video, which will be even more diversive, no, not diversive. What's the word? It's the diversity. Yeah, I think it's diversive, yeah. It's interesting, diversity means like a lot of different things, but diversive means like you're trying to separate. Okay, anyway. Let's talk about the butt crack incident and how big of an impact this has in my argument. How long does it take to put a belt on? And if you are overweight and your butt shows when you sit in a chair, is this the first time you noticed or is this something that you would know? Like if you sat without a belt at home and you had a younger brother or sister or a mom or dad and they noticed that you had your butt crack out, wouldn't they tell you, hey, Tommy, put on a belt? And you would probably put on a belt, right? Because you're living at home. Okay, so then why when you go outside to play at an all day magic event, you leave your belt at home, which will take, you have all your decks. Imagine this, you have 10 EDH decks, you double check your decks, you make sure that they have these 75 cards, your commander is in a nice little prism, you have a nice backpack, you're putting all your trade binders in, you're making sure that you're sorting. You spend hours, if not days, getting ready for a Magic Fest or a Grand Prix event. But you don't spend the five seconds it takes to put on a belt. Even though you know, and you know, because it isn't the first time you're overweight, that you have a butt crack problem. You go to the convention and this mean person who probably has butt cracks of their own, uh, he's taking photos of your butt crack and posting them online and they're going viral for millions of people to see. And the Magic the Gathering looks very, very poor because you went and put a belt on. So you spent days, if not weeks, preventing, you know, preparing for this huge Magic Festival you have all your cards, you have all your trade binders, you have all your commander decks, you have all the you know dice and play mats that you could ever want. And you don't take the five seconds before going to the all day multi weekend event to pelt on a belt. And now I got people in a comment telling me magic players are very hygienic, Dungeons and Dragon players are very hygienic and they're the cleanest people, none of them ever smell. The reason you cannot smell them is because you also smell. This is a scientific fact. Smelly people do not believe other smelly people are smelly because they don't. If you lived in a trash dumpster your entire life, nothing can be smelly. It's like the Futurama, it's like the Futurama episode where the person doesn't have smell, so they can't smell uh, the lobster character. I forgot his name, Zorberg, Jor right? And so she doesn't know what a bad smell is from a good smell because she's selling flowers at the dumpster because she has no smell. This is the same issue, the same issue. And a lot of people are not going to even talk or mention about the issue because it's not polite. And you know, whenever you talk about hygiene with the nerd culture, it, it gets really bad. Like, is there a reason that maybe a female player does not want to go out in public outside, you know, you know, treatment? And so I don't think it's really a treatment issue. I think it's a hygiene issue, right? These places are just, and it's not the store's problem. The store is trying to do its best. Oh yeah, revert. Okay, I, I know, I mean, I'm trying to make a simple point. My point is if you don't take the five seconds to put on a belt, but you can spend a week preparing for an event to not take the five seconds to put on a belt, to then have your butt crack shown to two, five, two million, five million people online on Buzzfeed, of all places, probably one of the worst places where people make fun of you. Uh, I mean, it's savage, right? You read the comments and it's like, oh my gosh, this is a disaster PR wise. Um, are you really going to take the 15 to 20 minutes to shower every day? No, absolutely not. You got better things to do. My dog agrees and he, uh, he's not in a good mood for hygienic. 
It's actually very difficult making videos with free dogs and a cat. The cat is pretty good. Bentley, come here. Bentley, no. Bentley, no. So, he, my dog, I don't know what he sees. He's kind of blind, I think. He's a Merlet and they do have like eyesight issues. His eyes are really blue. I don't know if you can tell from this distance, but his eyes are, anyway. Back to the current business model. And I'm going to pitch you a model and you don't have to agree with me. I don't need you to agree with me. Alpha investments model and backyard breaks model. Neither of those models do they have customers coming in using toilets. Neither of these models do they have customers at all unless it's a pre-appointment to buy a collection or sell a collection, right? Alpha Investments does not invite the public, his loving fans, his fans who adore him, to meet at his store. They're not allowed to play there. They're not allowed to do anything there. It's just a store, just to have a store. That is a successful business model. That is the business model. I've made a hybrid of Alpha Investments and Backyard Breaks. Backyard breaks, unless you have a very wealthy person like the real JR who spent millions of dollars every single month with them. They don't have anyone come to their uh, physical, it's not even store, it's just a business operation. It's like in a strip mall somewhere in Florida, right? There's not like customers coming out from the street into backyard breaks. There's not customers coming walking, walk-in traffic or even you know, hey, let's go to Rudy's store today to play some magic. There is none of that because it is not the right model. The model where you will do gameplay, not right. Because that's Wizard of the Coast's responsibility, not the game. For a long time, magic used to be profitable. Magic used to be a big game. It used to bring in people, you know, pre-release would bring in 100, 200 people locally in my area. Now there's nobody who's doing pre-releases, none. Like the store DNA Comics used to do 100, 200 people every single pre-release. And now they don't do pre-release at all. They're not even WPN client. They don't even play FNM because it's not, it's nonsensical. A, you have to buy a bigger space, which costs money, right? Rent is per square feet, by the way, in case you've never rented something. That's the same commercial as it is residential. You're paying per square feet because the comps, right, are related to who else in this area and what else are they paying per square feet. So you have more square feet because you need a place for gameplay. So instead of having products in that location, you know, like a GameStop, right? A GameStop is kind of a small space, but they put a lot of products because no one's sitting there for 10 hours playing Magic. In the middle of your, imagine a GameStop that tried to run a Magic tournament with even eight people. Wow, that, they would remove like the majority of their products to run this tournament. That would be horrendous for sales. You know, um, I mean, I mean, imagine the size of a GameStop or uh, Think Geek. I think Think Geek might have bankrupt, but whatever. Like, or you know, what? How would they be able to run a, a tournament? They don't have enough space because they're selling as much merchandise. So that's the model that Rudy Chan has. That's the model Backyard Breaks has with the live shopping, which I believe is the future of doing this. And at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with those models, but there is something wrong with you offering a space for players. And I know players are upset because they're entitled little blanks. But the game store doesn't own you, owe you anything. You don't owe the game store. You can, if Amazon has a sale, go for it. Nobody gonna stop you. And nobody would even know. But if you want your game store you have to behave in a certain way. And this is not even like, oh, hey, t I'm talking about etiquette. So, no, 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 I'm just talking about the basic math. You could have two types of game stores. You could have one like Rudy in mine, or you can have one where you offer gameplay and people sit there for hours and hours not buying anything, even though on social media, they're gonna post that they bought something. That's not true. You know, I, I don't know what it is about people, you know, Tulare Community College is all about local game stores until TCG Player became a sponsor. How you promote TCG Player, which is an online book. Oh, game stores are on TCG Player. Yeah, but distributors are on their better and they got prices. Distributors are pretending 
or Rudy Chan like models, right? They're also on TCG player and there's no way a game store with bigger overhead with employees and more electricity and who even knows the Rudy store has internet. It would not surprise me if I went there and there was no running water, there was no internet. It was just like a facade, right? You know, it was just a facade so he could get some distribution contracts. Cause that's what I did. <laughs> I made a facade. And they gave me my contract. I was like, okay, thank you. My first contract, not my second contract. My second contract, they didn't even care. They didn't even care. I was like, oh, so I'm not getting that physical building anymore. Is that okay? And they were like, oh yeah, no problem. Just buy some, buy some magic from us. I was like, oh, I really want to buy, po no, no, buy some magic. We will overlook that issue if you buy some magic. And I was like, Ugh. that's why I'm opening so much magic recently. I just have shit tons of it. Like it's just flowing. I got to get rid of it. I, so I'm going to open the good cards and I'm going to probably donate the rest to like a math teacher. I feel like a math teacher would appropriate. So if you are a math teacher locally, contact me. There's actually really, probably really good bulk because I don't really take the uncommons out. And if it's like a, you know, double rare or something, I don't know that like, I just take the one rare, I think, that's comes in a pack. Anyway, the idea that Wizard of Coast has that they will burden you, the game store owner, they don't pay you. You might be like, oh, they pay you in promos. God, <laughs> have you seen some of what the promos go for? And you're supposed to give these promos to your, your player base anyway, right? So, uh, supposedly. So no, they don't pay you to run these tournaments. They don't pay you. You don't get any secret layers in advance. You don't get your from the vault anymore. You don't get none of that shit. You just get to pay $84 a box that sells on Amazon for 60. That's the uh, opportunity they have presented you. Anyway, game stores are gonna change. I know a lot of people will talk about, oh, my new game store, my new, your new game store is gonna bankrupt. The PPP money is gone. We are entering the recession. So if you open a game store, in the last two years, you don't know what the recession is like. You're just used to the government giving you five trillion dollars, and then you, you know, not all. So you be like, oh, I didn't take PPP loans. Okay, cool. Everyone else did, and those people who did, they were spending money like crazy. Okay, they were buying Rolexes, they're buying Lambos, they're buying Magic cards. So just because your business didn't take PPP money does not mean it didn't benefit from the people who did. Right? When you put $5 trillion in the economy, I don't care what you're selling. You could be selling pieces of paper. People are just going to buy more because they have more money and then the paper price goes up because of you know, supply and demand, right? I mean, so then they buy even more, right? They're like, wow, look at this great investment. I'm just buying pieces of paper now, cardboard. Take, take away and I want you guys to think, use your Magneto, no, not, uh, you know, I love when uh, in X-Men, whenever they're trying to convey they're using psychic powers, they go like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so interesting. Couldn't they just do psychic powers without like doing this? Like, what, what does this mean? Like, like when it, so I, I'm just confused. I mean, does this like expand their psychic, but anyway, back to the point. Think hard guys, think hard. A lot of stores are going to go belly under during this recession. This was the, re it's crazy. COVID-19 hits, all these stores make shit tons of money, mainly due to Pokemon sports cards, right? And PPP loan money, which has never been going to recover. Trillions of dollars of money was just being given out like candy. And you know, game stores made a shit ton of money. And if you don't trust me, Google, uh, there's like PPP loan things that you can find out who took what loan. And obviously all of them were forgiven because that's what Joe Biden does. He's not going to investigate it or anything, right? Um, go check it out. You'd be surprised if your local game store took a PPP loan and how much money it was for. You're like, wait, they got like one employee. Why did it take it for $10 million? Why not? Sold me the taxpayer money. But anyway, not uh, uh, politics, right? God damn, I got to avoid politics until live streaming. And then we can go politic heavy because I don't think they monitor the live streams as much as they monitor the videos. I know if I title a video with certain, you know, if you title a video, Hunter Biden's laptop. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
<laughs> oh, channel's going to be banned as soon as that title goes live. Hopefully, it doesn't pick up that, you know, <laughs> thing, Majig, right now. Anyway, bye, guys.